Hi there, this is Shauna from The Foiled Fox and I am here on the on our YouTube channel and I have a collaboration with Paper Tray Ink and I'm using the Scene Everywhere at the Lake. This is a great uh, set that has a sunrise or you can use it as a sunset. It has some sentiments and it has a canoe and you can create a lake and it has a lot of really great things including a dock if you want to dock your boat um, there at the lake and then it has the matching die set there's a new uh, background called corrugated metal and this one has the two panels one of them that is to depict the um, recessed area the er other the raised and you can just imagine what a corrugated panel looks like and then this is uh, something that's a little bit older it's it's a sign hanging frames i'm using the oval for this and the little hanging bit there and i have the matching die set to cut that oval and that little upside down v and then for the papers i'm going to be using a white card stock primarily and a piece of um, bristol paper I'm using that because I want to do some ink blending and I have a card base that is four and a quarter by seven when folded. Now I'm going to start out with my Bristol paper and I have it in my stamp positioner. I've also put the sunrise in there or the sunset, the sun anyway, and I'm using some yellow and orange ink. These are paper tray ink, uh, ink colors. I'm using Bright Buttercup and Summer Sunrise, but you can use any of you colors you happen to have around. I have a spritz bottle where I'm spritzing it. Another reason why I'm using the Bristol paper, you, if, uh, you probably know that I like to use Bristol paper for ink blending, and I'll be doing some of that, but also I want this kind of watercolory look. So when I spritz it, it allows the ink to move a little bit. It doesn't grab because it has a harder finish on it, and it, it uh, kind of glides on the paper. And I'm using a little bit of Honey Nut to make it a little darker down at the bottom. Just want to touch it up a little bit. And now I'm going to be using the horizon piece that has a little bit of, it has some uh, trees. I'm going to start out with prairie grass. I'm going to make this um, kind of a, a uh, foresty, olivey, green um, trees in the background. And I'm also using some ripe avocado and a little bit of olive twist and some honey nut. And down at the very bottom, I'll use a little bit of the cocoa pink. Now, all of the inks, don't panic, are all listed in um, our supply list, and there's a link down below where you can find everything that we used for this project. Now, I'm going to move this over a little bit, my panel, because I want my, uh, and I'm going to move my stamp over as well. I want the horizon to go all the way across my paper. So I'm just going to use those same colors and stamp it. I stamped it a little bit high here, so I'm going to just move it a touch and stamp it down a little bit lower. No worries, just it worked out fine. It's one of those that's very forgiving. And then I'll move it over to the other side and stamp that just to get the horizon all the way across. Then I'll go for the lake here, I'll um, color that. I'm using the Tim Holtz um, blending al applicator with the domed foam app, uh, end to it. Love the dome foam, much better than the regular foam. Really works very nicely. So I used uh, some speckled egg there and now a touch of um, salvage patina, just for a little bit more shading, a little bit more depth. I'll just touch that up a bit and just in the areas, I don't want it all over it. I want some light and dark. And then there is a detail stamp here for the um, water and it will add some of the, the ripples. I'm using Hawaiian Shores for this. I am spritzing in between each one because I do want that ink to move. I'm going to move it over a little bit and get it across that the lake. And then I'm going to also move it down towards the bottom and add some more ripples there. Now I'm going to take my damp brush and I'm going to just move that ink a little bit. I've uh, smushed some of that Hawaiian Shores down at the bottom. 
uh, or on my glass mat and I, with my damp brush, not very much moisture on my brush. I'm using very little. And I'm just smoothing on a little bit more uh, ink. Now I'm going to do uh, the sky. And I'm going to start out with these, these, uh, this berry sorbet, bright buttercup, and summer sunrise. I think they give a very nice, I think I've decided that mine's a sunset. So um, I it just adds a little bit of that color that you get sometimes with the sunset. I have my damp brush again, and I'm just moving that ink around, adding a little bit more yellow. Smush some of that, that orange and yellow. I want it a little bit more intense towards the water. I'm also going to add some from my reflection as well, so this yellow and orange ink will work out nicely for that. Then next I'm going to take templed glass and I'm going to rub that on with my applicator again. I'm going to go almost to the top but not all the way to the top. I'm going to leave uh, some white near the top. Then this will finish this this background scene for now, um, and then I'll go on to uh, cutting out some of the other pieces and getting those ready. I'll cut out the canoe, the clouds, and the oar out of white cardstock. You can use Bristol paper here too. I'm also going to cut out the oval and that upside down V, which is the rope that hangs the sign. And I've got the canoe and the oar and the clouds mounted along with their stamps. Not with the clouds though, we'll wait for those. But I have just the background stamp. There's two stamps to the canoe. Um, there's one with the background color and one that'll do the detail. So I'm just stamping that with um, prairie grass, both the oar and the um, canoe. But then I'm going to add a little bit more brown to the oar by using honey nut and cocoa bean so it has a little bit more wooden look to it. Use a little bit of ripe avocado onto that canoe as well just uh, to do a little bit of shading. Now there's also a detail stamp for the canoe. This is the second layer. It's going to add uh, a little bit more of a wood look to it. I'm going to use pine feather and olive twist for this. Especially the pine feather is it's a dark uh, forest green and I really added that near the bottom and the top. Now for the clouds, I'm just going to smoosh some more ink on here, the yellow, orange, and that corally color from the berry sorbet. going to use my damp brush again and I'm going to just add in some color and then I'm going to bring in a little bit of Hawaiian Shores and add a touch of blue at the top because the sky starts to get blue above the sun. Now I've got all these pieces all ready. I'm going to set those all aside for now and I'm going to go on to doing my sign, my sentiment. Now I have this oval and the uh, upside down V. We'll get to that in a minute. But I have the corrugated metal. I'm going to start out with the wide um, stamp. This is supposed to depict the raised area of the corrugated, which technically you would think it would be lighter. I'm putting this on a, a vertically, or I'm sorry, horizontally, and I'm using soft stone for this. Now I just re-inked soft stone, and like I said, that you'd think it'd be lighter, but mine went on pretty strong because I just re-inked it. But that's all right. We're going to roll with it. I think it'll work out fine. Now I'm going to use the other stamp that is the narrow that will fill in the, the, those narrow uh, white stripes. I'm using weather vane. Now, theoretically, this is supposed to be darker. And I could have made it darker, but I was afraid I was going to get it too intense. So I decided not to go too heavy. Now I've got that little, that little rope V, which is my hanging rope for the sign. I'm going to use weather vane for that. Now with that done, I'm going to stamp the sentiment. 
Now, this is a great sentiment. Really love the sentiment. There's a few in here that are really wonderful. And I'm stamping it with True Black ink. And I'm just going to stamp it a few times here just to get a really dark impression. It fits perfectly in that oval, don't you think? And then I have that my card base. And I have a piece of Ocean Tides, which is exactly the same size as the front of my card base, which is four and a quarter by seven. Now my Bristol paper is about a half an inch smaller Top, top to bottom and side to side. So that means it's like three and three quarters by five, four, uh, six and a half, sorry. Um, and so it will fit and I'll, uh, it will actually show some of the um, ocean tides because it's a little smaller. I put some glue on the back, have a little foam piece there because I want it to pop up a bit. I'm not gonna stick it to the card base yet. Just gonna use that more as reference. I got some more work to do. I forgot that there's a little piece that is supposed to be the water underneath the canoe, you know, and that area is a little bit darker because the canoe is shading it. So I have to put that in with some Hawaiian shores. So I'm going to stamp that. I spritzed it first so I get a little bit of ink blending. And now... I have all my pieces out here because I got the background finished with that little strip and I have some foam tape on my canoe and my clouds and my oval but I'm gonna peel that off because I want it to go a little bit to the right and I realize that my that little strip of water that I created needs to be a little bit a little bit wider right there in the front so I'm using some Hawaiian shores and making that a little bit wider so I can move my canoe a little bit to the right so it can kind of hang off the edge there off of the off the edge of the bristol panel. Now with a little uh, micro dot adhesive I'm adding the ore and then I'll add the clouds. Remember they have some foam on them. Next I'm going to um, do the sentiment. Now you'll see why I didn't attach this yet to my card base. I have a brad here that's going to be like depict my uh, nail. I It was white and I colored it with a silver marker and um, now I decided I'm going to make this a little bit more rustic and add a little bit more dimension. I'm going to use a rustic cord instead of that piece that I cut that looks like a rope. And so I'm punching holes. I just use that piece. You can see I'm making sure my holes are in the right place so I can punch this last one. Just using a small hole punch. Then I'm gonna punch a hole about a quarter of an inch down right in the center. So that's gonna be for my brad. Now I have this length of cord that I have a knot down at the end. I'm going to poke that through. So now I have the knot there. Put the brad in its place. Now I made the brad a little bit too tight. As you can see, I can't get my cord underneath there. So I'm going to redo the brad by putting my tweezer between the brad and the paper on the front side and then close down the brad. That left me just enough room to get that cord in there, it worked out perfectly. Now I have to decide just how long I want this cord to be. I'm going to now thread it through from back to front. And I'm going to uh, tie a knot. Now the tying this knot and getting that knot right down to right where my oval is, sometimes it's hard to do unless you use a bead stringing, stringing technique. I'm tying this knot, I'm taking my my die pick and I have, you can use the needle for this and I'm putting it inside the knot and I'm pulling my thread, my cord all the way down, holding that pick up against that oval. You wanna hold that pick where you want that knot to be and then pull the cord and it'll automatically, magically go down to where you need it to go. 
I used to do a lot of pearl restringing in my former days. And so that is a great trick to get your knots where you want it to go. Now I've trimmed off the excess, taking off the foam tape, and I'm going to stick it in place. Now I'm almost done, but I'm going to put a touch of glue right at the top. I want to make sure that, that my cord stays in place and let that uh, dry and it'll hold it very nicely. And then I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the back side. And now we're going to stick it to our card base. I use glue here. I used to use double stick tape, but it's not as forgiving. I can't slip it around a little bit. It doesn't give me any wiggle room like the glue does. In case I don't get it just right the first time, I can move it around a touch. Now, one last little thing. It has these adorable little ducks that can float on the water. And I decided that my lake needed a few little ducks. So with some Olive Twist ink, I'm stamping three ducks. And now it is all done. And I just love this outdoorsy feel. It's great for anybody that does love the wilderness or the outdoors. Perfect for a birthday or for Father's Day. Um, it's just a wonderful card and a little bit different. So I really enjoyed it much more than I thought I would. Really was a great, great card to make. I hope you give it a try. I also hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. And also, here's a few items that I use to sign everywhere at the lake. Corrugated metal. It's a sign hanging frames. Bunch of inks and a bunch of other things. Everything is included in our supply list. The link's down below. Just click that and it'll take you to some close-ups, the supply list, and oodles more inspiration. I want to thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you next time. Bye.